I realized I wanted to be a doctor for the first time in sixth grade. By the end of college, I decided I wanted to be a bioengineer and a physician scientist. My name is Kafui Drasa, and I got to Duke in 2001. You have this opportunity to be amongst people who had sort of this unique idea and this vision that there was something beyond just the experience of becoming a doctor, some sort of greater purpose, and, and being part of a community moving towards that endpoint was something that I just couldn't turn down. When I got here, I was a chemical engineering major and very quickly got interested in the neurosciences and started pursuing work in that area. So as a physician scientist, I spent a lot of my time uh, working behind the computer, programming, um, and using bioengineering techniques to study how genes which lead to neuropsychiatric illness in humans ultimately disrupt brain circuits. We use this technique, which is in vivo neurophysiology, uh, a technique that was really pioneered uh, by my advisor who trained me at Duke, Miguel Nicolet, that's one of the fathers of Brain Machine Interface. And we use this technique to study entire brain circuits in mice to produce behavior, and then ultimately how genes, stress, or drugs of abuse disrupt brain circuit function and ultimately lead to the behaviors that you see in humans. So our goal is if we can understand these, we can create what are essentially pacemakers to fix the rhythms of brain circuits that become dysfunctional. Ultimately, to heal people suffering from schizophrenia, from depression, uh, families dealing with autism, post-traumatic stress disorder, and to come up with tools to really heal lives and allow people to function in society. So now it's watching the lab grow, um, training and mentoring other scientists scientists behind me and sort of going after those what we would call big hairy audacious goals. Um, the idea that we can ultimately cure these illnesses and put families back together. When I was interviewing I just got a, a sense of community here that I didn't get at other schools. There's a lot of support for minority students and a lot of diversity among the faculty and all. But my name is Kujo Owusu Chow, Kojo for short. Um, I came to Duke in 2006 for undergrad, and I started med school in 2010. The third year, being able to step away from the, the medical wards and become an expert in something that you're interested in. Like for me, I'm in a sports medicine project that I'm working on. We measure changes in the articular cartilage in the knee before and after exercise. There's a lot of question about what causes osteoarthritis, but one of the main things we've seen is that changes in cartilage thickness somehow relates to how the cells act and how they tear down or build cartilage. So we have a special MRI that can kind of measure how much of certain molecules are in the cartilage before and after um, exercise. So we're trying to see what differences we see between the two. For me, community service kind of plays a central role in what it means to be you know, a doctor and also kind of a human being. A lot of the community service work has been through the Student National Medical Association. We're, we're dedicated to serving underserved communities. We did a, uh, a community health, uh, health fair doing cholesterol checks, blood, blood pressure thing, glaucoma screening, and that type of thing. We also, on a monthly basis, uh, volunteer at the Durham Rescue Mission, kind of a, a homeless shelter um, where gentlemen who are coming off the streets, uh, maybe trying to get off of addictions, um, get to come. They, they learn a lot about scripture and spirituality and they uh, are given jobs, just a chance to kind of change their lives. So, you know, I'm really hands-on, you know, I like to get my hands dirty. My senior year in college, I built this, uh, this eight foot tall uh, DNA helix out of steel. And I was like, you know, what's beautiful is the DNA structure, you know, it just looks, you know, amazing. And on top of what it does, you know, just the fact that the way it looks is beautiful. I got into saxophone when I was 10. You know, it's really been just an amazing experience being able to play. It's, uh, almost becomes like an extension of myself, like a, like a second voice to say whatever you want to. I grew up in Zambia and uh, at the age of 17 I lost my father to HIV AIDS. Only a year later I lost my mother also to HIV AIDS. My name is Chikadi Mibenge Wheat and I arrived at Duke in 2008. I am the second um, eldest of four. We do have a young brother called Munsa, and uh, it was only a few years after my mother's death that we discovered that Munsa um, was also HIV positive. I had always uh, wanted to be part of a team that worked on designing an HIV AIDS vaccine and I was lucky enough to work under the mentorship of Dr. Barton Haynes who is the director of the Duke Human Vaccine Institute and is an amazing mentor. Um, he became 
like a father to me, has been like a father to me, supportive of my dreams. The rest of my life, I definitely want to be involved in HIV AIDS research. And so I uh, took on a project through uh, the Botswana University Partnership and went on to uh, Botswana, where I worked uh, on a study that looked at um, HPV viral subtypes in women um, who, were HIV, who are HIV infected, presenting with squamous cell carcinoma of the vulva. And we had some very interesting findings from the study. It was the first time this kind of study has been done in Africa, and I'm excited to be a part of uh, research in Africa. Duke is a place that sets no limitations on its students. It allows you to pursue your dreams. It allows you to go beyond your dreams. Duke encourages me to be the woman that I have become today.